Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's uh, MLB slate. Nice, kind of handy seven-game slate. Starts a little bit early today at 6.40. Um, we're going to go live at 5.40 to, to handle the questions and the late changes. I apologize for not having been around over the weekend. I usually am, and I was planning on it, but a uh, family emergency called me away. Um, believe me, I much, obviously would have much rather been in front of the computer doing DFS stuff, um, but uh, that's just the way it went. Uh, everything's fine and all that stuff for those that have asked. Uh, but I'm back today with the full set of content with what we have going today, which involves this, this pretty decent MLB slate and all components of the NFL slate tonight, which includes the two game slate and both showdown slates. And we'll get to that in different videos. Um, so again, we are going to go live a little early today, maybe at 540 because the slate's a little bit early and we'll be able to handle everything. So it is a core slate, which uh, always begs the question, do you want to play them or do you want to fade them? And there are a couple of decent options pitching wise. Uh, and let's just, let's just get after it. First game on the board, we have Houston and Tampa. And I, I thought that Houston was going to show up as kind of a better pivot than they, than they are. So uh, for me, I'm really not getting to Houston, even as a pivot here, I guess Rasmussen has been pretty good. So it's one of those I'll come up for, with a name for it one day. But those games where the pitching is just good enough to keep me off the hitting and the hitting is just good enough to keep me off the pitching. And I think that that applies to both sides of this game. You know, Garcia is good enough, but Tampa is good enough. You know, so I think this game is could be a could be a playoff preview, to say the least. Um, but it's certainly not a I mean, that certainly is. to me. It's really not a real DFS friendly uh, spot, at least for me tonight. So let's just start uh, with uh, Chicago, Miami. And, and right off the bat, you have what's likely going to be the chalkiest pitcher on the slate. And that would be a um, a very well projected Edward Cabrera at 7,500 um, at home against Chicago. He is popping as, I mean, clearly, clearly the best play. And he's being, you know, he's being owned accordingly. So that's, that's, that's already putting, the question to you, like, like, do you want to play him, for example, with Colorado? You know, excuse me, with San Francisco. Um, the answer is usually no. The answer is usually in GPPs, you don't want to play chalky pitchers with chalky hitters. Okay. So for me, I would probably play Cabrera with other teams. Um, not because he's not the best play, because he is. But I, I prefer to, to, to handle it that way. Now, there are other ways to handle the situation. Like Bobby is really good at this. Bob, Bobby could play Cabrera with, say, one of the chalkier stacks, be it San Francisco or whatever, and be very creative with his construction. You know, maybe play a one three six eight, or maybe a one two four nine, or maybe you only go two mans from that team or something like that so that you still get action. Um, I'm not quite that good. I, I still believe a little bit too much in the correlation aspect of, of having the hitters kind of together. Um, so for me, I'd much rather play by fading um, Cabrera with San Francisco. You know, if you play Cabrera with another team, which maybe we'll find something, then yeah, I think you could do that. So let's just put it, let's keep him here for now as the best play, uh, which he is. And uh, we'll see, you know, if we can actually play him. That makes any sense. Uh, I'm not getting to, I'm not getting to Wade Miley here uh, at all. Uh, all I'll say he's very low owned against a bad team. Um, that's, about, you know, maybe on a seven-game slate, that's enough. Uh, not not for me. As far as stacks go, um, you know, I just can't quite get to any of this. You know, I, I have, in, in addition to San Francisco, I have one, two, three, four other teams that I would feel comfortable playing um, from a, from a spend-up perspective. One thing I would say is that the Miami side, it, they always are really good values. And if you do undergo a construction where you pay up for pitching and don't play Cabrera, then you might need to play some Miamis and, and guys like Cooper and, 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 and Brian Anderson, uh, Charles LeBlanc, uh, these guys can be pretty decent value pieces in stacks where you need the savings. So don't dismiss Miami. If they show up in your builds, I wouldn't X them out. Um, I guess that's the best I can come up with, best I can describe what's going on in this game. Um, 
Okay, so now we have the, 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 the matchup that is always is always relevant, and that is the fact that we have a righty against the Tigers. And the Tigers are the worst team against righty pitching. And the righty at issue here is 6,100, that being Tyler Wells. Um, according to my projections, he is the second best play on the slate uh, when you rank them by a combination of fantasy points and, and, and you know, and, and points per dollar and things like that. Uh, I have this thing called Sheets Value Score, which kind of combines all this stuff. Not to mention the fact that I only haven't projected a 15% ownership. So I think that he's very solid. Um, uh, I heard some maybe some pitch count issues. Maybe. I mean, let's take a look at this. Um, it says he worked his pitch count up to 50. So from 34 and then to 50 in his last two starts after coming off, you know, a month layoff. Um, but I will say this, if there's any ever a matchup where, you know, they want, you know, they can get away with, with, with get away with uh, having a little bit of a leash, I guess, would be in the, in this, in this matchup. So I don't know. I think this is kind of a, this is a really strong play. Um, hope, and it, what is, what's the worst that happens to get 75 pitches against a, a team that's really, really weak against righties. I think this is very strong. Um, I think it's a really good pivot off of Cabrera. If you wanted to play someone else with, with the, with a cheapo. Now again, not to say Cabrera is going to have a bad game and Cabrera certainly projects a solid four fantasy points ahead of him, but I don't know. You get a little bit of ups, you get a, you do a little better out of Wells and a little worse than Cabrera. It's all you need, you know, and, and certainly there are builds where you could double pay down with both Wells and Cabrera and make that work. So uh, I think that uh, Wells is, is very, very lively. Um, let's put him in for now, actually. about um alexander he really doesn't show up for me at all um just gives up a lot of just a lot of everything that we don't like to see in fantasy so he's an x for me um let's take a look at the hitting so i was expecting this to be the case you have baltimore that rates to be a pretty good combination of both uh raw points and value more of the value side. I mean, there are teams that project better than they do as far as just raw runs and points and fantasy points and stuff like that. But when it comes to value, that they're really showing up as, you know, probably the best value under San Francisco, you know? Um, so I also think they might get some ownership. It just makes a little bit of sense, but certainly not as much as San Francisco. But I would certainly look at Baltimore as, as a decent – I don't even want to say pivot off of San Francisco. It's, it's kind of a different type of play. But let me just go over some of the guys. That's what I like to do when I really like the team. Um, I like uh, – again, it depends on who's going to start, obviously. But Austin Hayes, I like him. Um, I even don't mind Orias and then Mountcastle. What, what, what position do I have to in? He's day to day. I don't know if he's playing. Let me just take a look at Moncastle. He wasn't in on Sunday. He left Saturday with a tricep contusion. Pretty sore. Well, let's take a look because if, if Jesus Aguilar gets in the game, I mean, now he's 2,400. So that would be that would be certainly very useful. Um, so, yeah, I think that uh, these Baltimore guys are in play. And then if you want to spend uppers in Baltimore, you can play Rushman and, and – um, what do we have? Mullins? Mullins have? I don't know. Mullins projected for some reason. So we'll watch for that. We'll watch for the updated numbers. But uh, Mount Castle, Mullins, Santander. It depends who gets in. But I think all these guys are in play for Baltimore. And I'm not getting to anything on the Detroit side. All right, so Washington against Atlanta. So this, to me, is um, is is the what I call the obvious natural pivot, right? Um, but we'll get to the hitting in a second. Uh, let's talk about Kyle Wright for Atlanta. So I have him rated as as my third best overall play, uh, behind Cabrera and Wells, um, and he's going to be owned. You know, he's 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 underpriced against kind of a weak team. So he's going to be owned somewhat, but again, like as long as you don't play the two chalks together, you know, with other chalk hitters, 
I think you could play Kyle Wright. Like, I wouldn't play Kyle Wright with Cabrera, I don't think, and and San Francisco, for example. And we haven't even got like a two high price, you know, spend ups, which are both obviously very playable. We'll get to that in a second. But Kyle Wright is definitely a very, very reasonable price at eighty eight hundred. Um, and you know, if this should have been obvious to anybody who you know who was, who was watching that Atlanta is 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 the very I would say obvious pivot off of San Francisco. I worry that they're just kind of too obvious and they're going to be owned like a little bit too much as a result. Um, so that that's kind of what I'm worried about here. And to the point where I don't even think that you could play Atlanta with the chalky pitching, you know, and I don't think you play Atlanta as a compliment to San Francisco either. I really think they are going to be somewhat over owned. Um, but I mean, if you get away with kind of a pitching combination like this, like Cabrera and Wells, for example, um, then you might be able to get away with it. You play guys like um, Acuna, 5,700, put some other guys in here. Olsen against a, a righty, right? He's 4,700. Then you get Austin Riley. He's my next favorite. Then uh, go Harris or Grisham or Grossman, Swanson. Any of these guys are fine, but let's we'll start with these three. And as you can see, I mean, you can get these guys in pretty easily um, if you pay down for pitching. Um, we'll get to the spend ups again. We will get there, but I think that Atlanta is uh, the obvious pivot, maybe a little too obvious. Um, so we'll have to we'll have to deal with that. Washington on the other side, I'm not really getting to them in any in any shape or form. They're going to be a, probably a big fade for me. All right, so now we have uh, an interesting, well, an interesting baseball game. You have, you have Scherzer against Burns. Um, these are obviously two really really top pitchers. They both have they both have a pretty big ceiling when things are are lined up for them. Um, they both have you know have a little you know like I say they both have some fleas in this particular situation though. Uh, Burns only because his matchup against the Mets is not ideal. You know Mets are a good hitting team and they're not a particularly big strikeout team. So while Burns does have you know insane amount of talent upside and things like that well above his projection um uh the matchup itself kind of reduces that a little bit like, like right now i have him like a mean projection i have him at about you know 20 or whatever but he certainly can get 30 you know um and that's kind of the difference i think between him and kyle wright i don't think kyle wright has like a 30 uh, now again kyle wright also is 2000 cheaper um and, and, and that's something to respect. I mean, you know, you get a 30 on a seven game slate out of a pitcher. That's, that's a, uh, put you in a tough uh, position to, to attack, you know? Um, so Burns is certainly in play. I have him rated for it. Um, but, you know, you could certainly pair him with any of the three guys I mentioned, you know, they're below in price and get away with it. With respect to Scherzer. Yeah. I mean, you tell me that, um, you know, he's full go and all that stuff against Milwaukee. Milwaukee has some strikeouts in its lineup. I mean, I feel as though, you know, 10, nine is perfectly reasonable, but it's the same situation with respect to Verlander the other day. So Verlander there, you know, there was no reason for them to go, go nuts with him. And we didn't know whether we were supposed to play him or not. And what ended up happening was that we were, we were both right. In other words, he only pitched like five innings, but he pitched a no hitter through five innings and he still got them you know, at low ownership. Um, I don't think that if Scherzer are similarly limited, that you have that same cushion. Because Milwaukee is better than, than uh, whoever, uh, Berlander. I think he was holding his Oakland or something like that. So I don't think Scherzer can get away with only a 75 pitch limit and get there uh, tonight. Um, but let's look at it. He was on the 15-day injured list. He did have a rehab start. Um, so you got to watch for, for for coach speak about any kind of pitch limit. I'd like to think that it's not the biggest deal for him to come and throw a million pitches, although, you know, getting a good seed uh, is becoming somewhat important for the Mets in the playoffs. I think because if they get, you know what it is, maybe they get second or something, they get a bye. So listen, he is on the, not older side, whatever, but you don't want to blow him up for the playoffs. But then again, you'd like to get this win. Um, so I don't know what I want to do with this. Um, 
I don't think that you're supposed to play Burns and Scherzer together. I just think that getting both of those things home is kind of tough. Um, but I certainly am not going to yell at you to play either of these guys. I do think that Burns is the better the better play, even though the matchup is worth. I'm just worse. I'm just more confident that he's going to get his hundred pitches than than I am with Scherzer. So I do like Burns a little bit better than uh, than Scherzer today. Um, and with respect to the hitting, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not messing with any of that. Um, so now we get to the last two games. You get, uh, first of all, we have San, San Francisco, Colorado. And just to kind of put it in, put this in uh, a little bit of perspective, I have San Francisco rated like above Atlanta, but I will say just barely. Okay. Where, where San Francisco really actually shows up more or in the, isn't the value, you know, like you have some of these guys that are just cheap, you know, like Brandon Crawford, even Yaz and, and Villar and Lamonte Wade and Luis Gonzalez, guys like that. They don't project that much better than anybody. I mean, in Atlanta, when you have to, when you deal, including the spend ups. Um, and I will say their ownership is again, I don't think it's through the roof relative to Atlanta. I think Atlanta is is the team that might be a little, I don't want to say over-owned. I think they're both going to be high-owned and high-projected. And I think that if you really want to win GPPs, you'll play somebody different. Um, but that's where it is with San Francisco. Uh, but again, I, I mentioned the team, the, the guys that that are going to rate well. And, and the thing you have to remember, by the way, is that this is a late game. So watch the, watch the board, you know, for um, – Watch the board for uh, for lineup changes and things like that. Um, those are, I guess, the top three. Let me put in if Villar gets in, at least twenty four hundred. And that's kind of obscene. Uh, and then what is what is a uh, Gonzalez and Wade and, and these types of guys? Um, Luis Gonzalez is twenty two hundred. You know, I mean, you get him in this in this ballpark. That's that's kind of tough to pass up. Um, and that's the thing. I mean, I, I would prefer if I played San Francisco to play the value pieces along with lower owned primary stacks, as opposed to playing them in, in a full stack. That would be my, my suggestion. Um, the, the team that to me is, is looks like the team you want to play is actually is Colorado. You know, who, who, who died and, 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 and inducted, inducted, uh, Jacob Junis into the Hall of Fame. I mean, really. I mean, he had a good game in Co in Colorado last time he played. Um, but I don't know. For me, I think this is what you're supposed to do. And I'm looking at Colorado as rating just a little bit below Atlanta with maybe half the ownership of either Atlanta or San Francisco. I don't know how it's possible, but that's what I'm seeing right now. So for me, I, I think this is going to be one of the top two stats as far as when you're killing GPPs and all that stuff. So let, let me let me go over who we can use from there. Um, I guess my favorite might be Ryan McMahon. I really I really liked him in the spot, and then obviously Charlie Blackman. Play him. Give me a couple of others. Can't fill out the whole thing, but Grichuk, like him, he's only thirty nine hundred. Then well, sir, Daza. If you want to pay down, I I suppose either Daza or Crone, and then that's you want to pay up. Sorry. Then there's uh, who else? Taglia, maybe, and Daza, perhaps. There's Daza. Yes, yeah, so Daza. Daza. I make him. One of the one of the better plays. Well, he's only twenty nine. So, I think that this, um, I think the Colorado is probably the 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 main the main idea here on the slate, except for one other. Um, all right, so let, let's let's get to this last game, uh, Arizona Dodgers. First of all, I'm not playing Scherzer. He doesn't pitch enough. You know, he doesn't, doesn't throw enough pitches. They they they're 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 slowly they're keeping him reserved for the playoffs. They, they're 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 already locked into the one seed by a lot, I think, and and there's just literally no reason to risk anything with anybody on this team. Um, so, what you really have to do is watch for um, watch for the lineups, 
But I will say that if you do get the Dodgers and you get their real lineup, uh, I think this is what this is the other idea along with Colorado that you're supposed to play. Um, and I think that you, you know, you pay up, you can pay up for them. You can pay down for them. I mean, whatever you want to do. I think you do have to start though with Freddie Freeman. And then I guess, I guess you do, if you'd like, I mean, it would be nice to be able to spend up for Mookie Betts, but again, you gotta see, you gotta see who's in here. Like I'd, I'd like to get Joey Gallo in at 3,300. That would, that would be, that'd be pretty sweet. And then you might not think you could do this, but you play up for, for Trey Turner as well. You can get you can you can make all this work, you know. Then it's either Muncie or Chris Taylor or see who they throw in there, you know. Maybe you want to play one of the cheapos if they get in. I wouldn't I wouldn't go crazy if it's like all cheapos and they're resting everybody. Um, but if they're then they're all line up a reasonable amount of it in. I I I would take a shot at this. Um, now listen, Merrill Kelly's been better and all that, but we're looking for something different. Um, and if you get the Dodgers on a small slate maybe the fifth highest on team, sixth highest on team. I would, I would take a shot at that. So uh, Arizona, no thanks. So again, just to summarize, I suppose, and then we'll, then we'll run a, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run a, uh, can I run a Saberson build? I'll run a Saberson build and see what it would come up with, at least at this early juncture. But, you know, Cabrera is the best play. I think Tyler Wells looks really strong as, as a cheapo. And then I think Burns is better than Scherzer and, and right kind of in the middle. I guess that covers everybody. And then hitting wise, the best projected plays are San Francisco and Atlanta, but I kind of want to get off of that. So I think Colorado Dodgers, Baltimore, those guys, um, I think are probably what I would like to do. Um, before I actually run over to the Saberson builds, let me um, let me look at FanDuel for just a second and just see if anything is different. Um, now I still think Cabrera is the best play, even paying that, even paying up for ninety six hundred for him over there. Um, he's still going to be high on though. And then hitting wise, as usual, you know you'll be able to afford whoever you want. Let me just see if it's if, I think it's got to be the same types of pivots if salary really isn't an issue. So I'm looking at it and I do see, yeah, San Francisco, the same thing. San Francisco, Atlanta will be the top guys. And then a big drop to Col and it would drop to Colorado and the Dodgers. And Dodgers and Colorado will be lower owned. So I think it's the same deal. Um, all right, let's do a, a Saberson build. And again, I encourage you guys to give Saberson a shot if you haven't already. You can get you can subscribe to it from true dfs and what true dfs will do is it'll allow you to upload my projections or their own obviously straight from the um straight to the saber sim optimizer here so what i'm going to do though I'm, I'm kind of doing it the long way we're going to go we're going to build 150 just to see what i would get we'll build well let's we'll build 150 and again, this is early. This is without lineups. I don't even think I have what's the name? Cedric Mullins projected for some reason. Um, but let's just see. Uh, what, what do I think is going to happen? I think I think we're going to get. Do I think they're going to jam in San Fran? It's you. They usually do, but I think they are going to give me some Atlanta this time. So I think it's going to be mostly San Fran and Atlanta, and then Cabrera with. I'm going to say Burns. That's what, that's what I'm going to suggest. I'm going to think that I'm going to get Burns and Cabrera or Burns and Scherzer because they don't really know about the pitch counts. Um, and then with San Francisco. So let's take a look. All right. So in 150 lineups, first of all, team stacks. Yep. 56%. Not that San Francisco. 42% Colorado, which I would like to see. Then Atlanta, Baltimore, Will Detroit. Not much Dodgers. And then when it would come to pitchers, only eight pitchers. Cabrera, clearly the best. And then, yeah, as I suspected, they would have Burns ahead. Um, so Cabrera, Burns, they do have Tyler Wells as, as, as a decently owned. And then there's Luis Garcia, Garcia there. Not much Scherzer at, or, or Kershaw in this in this idea. Because, again, I do think the pitch counts are uh, are uh, are an issue for both of them. 
Um, okay, that'll do it. Uh, I will be there live at about 5.40 to go through new lineup changes and all that and, and go through late questions. Until then, uh, good luck.